up. Uh, yeah. When Cuomo heard what Dan Quayle had said in a speech last week, Cuomo branded the comments too stupid to even uh, respond to. Well, that's the way uh, a guy like Cuomo deals with the motto. He tries to paint them into a corner as being stupid, but the guy's pretty crafty. What well, is this it? is Quayle I'm talking about. What? It's Gilbert on the phone. What does he want? He wants a call to ask if he can come in. <laughs> He's calling from the jock lounge. Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah. No, what Gary means is <laughs> you should call before you show up. Just oh, because... I got it mixed up. Well, what if I had, like, a lot of people in, and then uh, all of a sudden I had to turn you away, then you'd be pissed. Yeah, I know. All right, just come in here. Okay. All right, Gilbert. Gilbert Gottfried. Some guy asked me Saturday night. I was out. I took my parents to dinner, and he said, uh, hey, when's Gilbert going to be back on the show? People were missing Gilbert. Whoa, look at those pants. <laughs> yes. What happened? Yeah, it's my new hip look. Or do you have epididymitis? What is that? <laughs> well, Gilbert has a pair of sweatpants with, like, like Zoso Led Zeppelin uh, <laughs> writing all over it. But wait a second. Stand up a second. I got to see. Yeah, okay. I look like Emmett Kelly. Plus, he tucks in his shirt. Pull your shirt right, out. and he's got a regular old shirt on. <laughs> Not like a sweatshirt. I know. Yeah. It, it, that shirt doesn't go with sweatpants. I know. I always kill a look. He's got a man-tailored shirt with sweatpants, and Gilbert has very big hips. <laughs> what is going on down there? <laughs> Gilbert's got, like... Childbearing hips. Because he's little, and then all of a sudden. I look like I'm built like Paul Abdul. Yeah, you are a little bit. You're very narrow up top, yes. and then on the bottom, you, you fan out a little bit. Well, Gilbert is not known for his physique. No, Gilbert does sit around and go to sea. Well, you yeah. gotta you gotta work on a body like this. Do you ever exercise? <laughs> oh, constantly. No, seriously, you do, you, do you ever actually like, go to a gym no. or anything? No, you no. would never do that. Gilbert would never do that. He's a, he's afraid. Uh, there's he a stoop in front of a building I won't go in. And yeah. <laughs> he just he's just very he's he's like mush. Yeah. But yeah. he doesn't care. He's making money with his mind. No, I've got a solid physique. It's deceptive. You must go. Women must go nuts when you take your clothes. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so lucky to be with Gilbert Gottfried. Oh God, you're so tight, Gilbert. We're still doing the news, oh, but sorry. afterwards, you know, we have a lot to talk about. Yes, we have tons to talk yes. about. You know, I just ran into a picture of the senator I was talking about a little earlier who had to uh, decide not to run for re-election. Yeah, he because... need he needed to harass women. But look at this hairpiece. I know. <laughs> Did you see this yeah. hairpiece? Did you see that? That guy who's like sort of like not running for re-election because he's supposedly one woman's accusing him of rape and another one's accusing him of uh, all kinds of stuff. But if you look at the guy, you say, "Hey, you know, it's kind of hard to get abroad." Yeah, look at that. Thing. Well, he could always use his hairpiece, right? He should borrow your sweatpants. That's right. <laughs> those Led Zeppelin. <laughs> are those Led Zeppelin sweatpants? I don't know what they what are. What is the writing down the, your leg? The, the lettering has washed off. Robin, what is that? Have you ever seen sweatpants like that? It has no. lettering all down the leg. What does it say? Do you know what it says? I don't know. But stand up, I'd I'll have to, I'd have to take them off. Let me see. Which would be a disgusting sight. Hold it. Move back up a little. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, wait a second, Turn Robin. Around. You Turn try around. to read this. Okay. What does that say? Continental? What? If... Oh, is it the airline? You got an airline pants? No, they, they generally don't give out pants. Wait a second, that. Gilbert. What does it say on there? Continental Hotel. Yes. Some hotel that had a nightclub in it. Oh. Yeah. So you work it doesn't there? get that exciting. Jesus, yeah. Gilbert, that is the most frightening outfit I've ever seen here. <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah. We've got to talk to Gilbert about his near-death experience. That's yeah. right. See what happened to him. I feel like Michael Landon. <laughs> Except Gilbert never got any press. Yes. <laughs> you should have called Life Magazine, tell him you'd give him the story. I Gilbert. get near death and no one cares. <laughs> Gilbert was near death, and, he, and I go to see him in the hospital, and he says to me, oh, I, I, don't know, I don't know the business. I, I'm just going to give it all up. It's not worth it. Did he really That's, say that? Oh, did I say that? Oh, Gilbert. Oh, you were hallucinating, I think. Yes. He, was like, he, was like, he was like, he was like, I tell you, it's just, the times like this make you realize, what does it all mean? And I'm like, oh, my God. I see, you know, I wonder no one ever wants to see Gilbert yeah. serious. Well, I think he was thinking about marriage when I talked to him. He was. I, I was. Because you said, you just don't realize. <laughs> You know, vulnerable you are when you live alone. Yeah. I was there all alone. It's not like nobody Gil would have known. It's like Gilbert would have an appendix attack every day, and thank God he's married now because That's a right. woman to be there. Somebody will know. Because when I was there, there was some blonde who was coming to visit you, 
Of course, cute. It's Morgan Fairchild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I keep these That's things. That's it was. <laughs> and uh, she was really cute and everything. And you could tell that like, Gilbert didn't want her there with me there. It was like, <laughs> he practically threw her out of the room. It was, so, it was like, oh, I'm done with you now. You can leave. <laughs> but uh, it was frightening because, you know, you don't like to see a friend of yours. Even, you know, Gilbert's one of our show business friends. Right. You don't like to see him, you know, in a bad way. Right. But it was all this embarrassing stuff he was doing in front of us. You knew it would end up on the radio eventually. <laughs> But Gilbert didn't even care. That's how sick he was. He's like, I don't care. <laughs> he didn't let it all hang out. <laughs> so how about the time I went to see Gilbert in the hospital and the black nurse comes in? Yeah. Two oh, black nurses. Geez, yes. And, um, of course, they were doing shtick with me. And Gilbert just goes, okay. <laughs> you're done now. You can leave. I don't want to be bothered. Howard's here now. <laughs> well, we have so much to talk about. Yeah. But I'll wait till Robin's done with the news. Okay. Because there's so much to talk yes, about. So much. Endless Gilbert stories now. <laughs> there's enough for nine appearances. I know. I and know. Gilbert, be years. And by years the way, of material now. Gilbert is here because it was real weird. I just thought when you got out of the hospital, you'd come. Yeah. But Gilbert was like waiting for an invitation. Really? <laughs> Yeah, but then finally a go-between came to us on Friday and said, Gilbert's very upset because you guys haven't called to have him on the show. And we said, I, I didn't say I was we upset. Don't... Well, no, she told no, us. No, she said. And I, I know who this is. Too. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Did we ever call you to be on the show? Well, no, no, never. If, if Gilbert... I was waiting for a call, I'd never be on the show. I don't know. There was something going on. <laughs> I'm waiting for an invitation. But there was a lot going on. Anyway, so where were we in the news, Robin? Well, I was just about to tell you that today's the big day at the John Gotti trial. Sammy the Bull Gravano takes the stand. He's the guy who used to be one of John Gotti's best friends, who's privy to all John Gotti's secrets, who is now turned state's witness. Those guys were really close. They used to go to Richard Belzer concerts together. Is that right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, hi, John. Oh. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look who's in the audience. Gotti, great. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, Gotti I like, but this Bush and this whole administration I don't like. Yeah, yeah sure. But Gotti's okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, Bush and the whole Bush administration yeah, yeah, they, forced John Gotti. They march into third world countries and, like, take over with this whole imperialist attitude. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Hey, you know what we ought to do today? Yeah. In honor of you being back? From the hospital? Yes. You would have called Jerry Seinfeld's answer. Okay, and yes. And this should leave yes. him a long Oh, message. that would be great. Jerry <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, Robin, so you're saying John Gotti is at trial, and today's the big testimony of... Right, this is the star witness right. of the case. And uh, he has been described by some as a little man, full of evil, cunning, conniving, That's me. selfish, psychopathic, <laughs> a worm, and a dangerous snake. So well, we never called Gilbert a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, they have, uh, you know, they have tapes. They bug all these guys. Yeah. And here's a tape of um, Sammy the Bull at the movies. They even had a bug when he was watching the movie. Yeah. And here he is. Sick man. And the poor guys at the movie with him. They couldn't hear anything. All the other patrons. Did you see that movie? Uh, no, I still haven't seen it yet. I haven't been sent to free pass. Cape Fear. Yeah. Good. You're going to love that scene. Yeah. You're going to be dying. <laughs> This De Niro just sits there and laughs at this movie, <laughs> and everyone in the theater is afraid of him because he's so terrifying. They just they have to sit there and listen to him laugh like a mental patient. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> anyway, Robin, you were saying. Oh, well, in uh, Virginia now, they're going to uh, resume deliberation today on the fraud trial of that infertility doctor who used his own sperm to impregnate women. They came for artificial insemination, and they were supposed to be getting anonymous donor sperm. And he impregnated what do I call? <laughs> with his own sperm. So uh, they've now given that over to the jury. So I don't see why that's here. a crime. Well, it's fraud to tell people that you're doing one thing and then do another. You hey. know, this is a man who's, uh, you know. You want to have sperm from a stranger injected into you. I saw that movie, Sperm from a Stranger. <laughs> injected in you. Yes. <laughs> but want to have that done, I say, hey, that's it. That's tough luck. You shouldn't be having that done as it is. I'm really against that, by the way. You know that. Oh, uh, the whole thing. I absolutely. And everyone says, well, Howard, if you had a fertility problem, maybe you wouldn't be talking like a big shot. I don't care. So I wouldn't have kids. It would be tough. It would be difficult. But I don't like all that sperm bank junk. First of all, I have a friend who donated 
over 400 ejaculations to a sperm bank. Honest to God truth. And quite frankly, in Boston, in the Boston area, there are probably tons of his kids roaming the streets, marrying one another. Oh, None of them know you that. No, I never thought about that. I mean, it is an incredible. They don't ship the sperm to other places. No. In the Boston area, when we were in college, this guy had blonde hair and blue eyes, and he was, uh, you know, uh, uh, some kind of goyim. And uh, everybody wanted his sperm. He was the best. That's almost <laughs> like those uh, charity things where they say 90% of your donations will stay right here in your state. That's right. <laughs> so he would go in, ejaculate into a test tube, like Gilbert does yes. every night. <laughs> and I don't get any money for it. Right. <laughs> Gilbert's doing it for free. I was actually going to go do it because they gave you 75 bucks to pop. And, right. then I just, and then I had a whole morality I'd be a multi-millionaire by now. I know. and, and But no one would want your sperm. Yeah, it's a problem. problem. <laughs> You're a short Jew. <laughs> you know, nobody wants a stand-up comic sperm not exactly top not sperm exactly i mean look at you your hips are <laughs> bigger than the rest of your body i could be going out with emilio estevez right you do look a little like paul abdul yes. i'm talking about from the neck down <laughs> you really Isn't do that cousin he mistaken you for her on occasion yeah yes <laughs> and he dances like paul abdul and i too. haven't turned them off either how many times a week do you masturbate honest to god uh, let me see just starting from uh, the time i got out this morning you could, have you done it yet uh, no, no, not since this operation. Really? Yeah. Are you no, afraid to masturbate? Scary. Yeah, I'm afraid my, my chest will explode or something. Well, because uh, I've got a condition now, epididymitis. Yeah. My right testicle is all... Well, uh, you two are just like two old men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your condition? Two old idiots. Oh, yeah, how's your condition? Let's see your testicle. Oh, <laughs> uh, if you show me your appendix, Scott. Oh, God, is it big. Is it really? Yeah. Why, though? I thought they have a way of... Well, it was birth. Oh. Can't See, they give you like a bikini cut? Oh. <laughs> he, he missed that whole thing. They had to go in and just open everything. Oh, really? Yeah. When it's, when it's, before it bursts, they take it out, they can sew it up neat. Yeah. Once it bursts, it's like, wow. They had to, they had to reoperate to do reconstructive surgery. Did we learn every aspect everything. of Gilbert's oh. operation when we were in the hospital? <laughs> Gilbert was like, Gilbert, you know, you thought he'd like want us to entertain him. He yeah. just, he just would like, oh, it was terrible. <laughs> I was laying on the floor. And I wouldn't call for an ambulance because I didn't want the front page of the newspaper. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was delirious. Yeah, you really were. <laughs> I didn't want the front page of the newspaper to read, Gilbert Godfrey brought to hospital. Call 911. And I was like, Gilbert. Gilbert. You call the hospital. Gilbert, this is, call the hospital. No one's putting it in the newspaper. <laughs> yeah, he's laying there dying. I, I realized after I was already near death, yeah. I couldn't even get a page six message. <laughs> I was unbelievable. <laughs> Gilbert actually called the post to tell me he was in the hospital. Oh, no. It's pathetic. <laughs> Gilbert, it makes you realize we're on the show business ladder. That I know. Gil I said, Gilbert is totally delusional. He's sitting there telling me and my friend. And Gilbert's a real ballsy guy, you know what I mean? My friend called him, you know, Dominic Barber, yeah, of course, right. the lawyer. Called him up and said, Gilbert, is there anything I can do for you? I'll come visit you. He goes, well, Howard, come. Bring I, a meeting of the family. Yeah, Dominic goes, uh, <laughs> Dominic goes, oh, I can't bring Howard, but I'll come if you want. And, and Gilbert goes, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> do you mind? Yeah, yeah. Do you mind? Oh, man. I'm near death. Bring someone who's been on the radio. It's pretty wild. <laughs> Anyway, Robin, so what else is in the news? Well, you'll be happy to hear this. Eating yogurt may be scientifically uh, a sound way to prevent a vaginal yeast infection. Wrong. See, you said well, that yogurt wasn't vaginal good. Yeast. You eat a lot no, of yogurt, it is not, too, it is not true. Uh, first of all, unless you eat it through your vagina. <laughs> I don't think... Now, let me explain something about yeast infection. I know something about this. A lot of women who wear nylon panties... Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here you go, Bert. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of women who wear uh, nylon um, or synthetic panties or what? Say it those? more angry. Those panties. <laughs> with those synthetic panties. Yes. And those women that wear the panty hose get yeast infection because the yeast uh, uh, coagulates there in their vaginas. Now, I like what? coagulating vaginas. <laughs> and uh, the yeast forms because of the heat. Now, you gotta let your vagina breathe. <laughs> no, I'm being serious, it's a Gilbert. Frightening thought of breathing yeah. vagina. Well, you're someone with health problems, you understand. Yeah, it's a breathing vagina going. <laughs> <laughs> yeast, yeast, give me yeast. <laughs> so, you gotta allow it to breathe. You know that's how it starts. And, uh, it's also after sex. Can we should... hear your vagina breathe? <laughs> Robin, put the microphone yes. up to it. Put the microphone under your skirt. We wanna hear your vagina right, she's breathe. She's doing it. Let it, let it happen. What is it? <laughs> okay, now hold your breath. I told for a you. Second. Okay, now let it out. <laughs> Robin, very good. Well, Robin's back. Very good. Have you ever had yeast yeah. infection? What?
months. I told you that. Right. And what was it from? It was from um, not enough yogurt. Over sterilization of the area due to a surgical procedure. Oh, really? Yeah. That's what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I had vaginal yeast. No, but let, let me be serious about this. Okay. There's a lot of reasons why women get this, and and also um, if you um, if you eat yogurt. Yogurt doesn't do anything to get rid of your. Uh, it don't do you anything. Know what it I just does. know it. Just trust me, it doesn't. <laughs> it just that's that's an old wise tale. Will sale. you let me tell you what the right, scientists have said? The, Dr. Uh, Godfrey, I think, yeah. uh, did that. A new uh, study yes. in the March Annals of Internal on Medicine. I've vagina. Just in, yeah. yes. Suggests a threefold drop in chronic candidal vaginitis. Candido. Often called yeast infection. Candido. <laughs> we can, can make it together. together. <laughs> Among women who ate eight ounces a day of yogurt containing lactobacillus acidophilus. Mm. Impressive the way you read that. That well, was a famous I know all dinosaur. These from my own, <laughs> my old experience. You would have better luck taking the yogurt and putting it on your vagina <laughs> than anything. Women cannot... who ordinarily had nine infections in a six-month period went down to three. I don't know what these women are. <laughs> nine infections? In six months. That's like the girl Gilbert sleeps with. <laughs> I have yeast infection, Gilbert. I've had it nine times in That's six okay. months. That's okay. Come on. I don't care. Nothing will happen to me, will it? <laughs> I don't care. I've had not, my appendix not, removed. Not 100% proven that AIDS spreads among heterosexuals. Okay. Yeah, come on. <laughs> it's not AIDS. It's just yeah. yeast. Yeah. Women who normally had three had one. So, it must look like they're baking a cake down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a frightening sight, like a rabid dog. Like they're the Pillbury Doughboy down there. Yeah. <laughs> they not, uh, they're not exactly sure exactly what it is about the yogurt that helps in this situation, except that, that it may be that the bacteria in yogurt is a natural enemy of yeast. Cottage tree is good for hemorrhoids. <laughs> now, if you're listening to I, me, I swear to pound the vet up my butt every day. And you want to day. try this for yourself. Go just ahead. remember that not all yogurts contain this lactobacillus acidophilus. But which yogurts are good, Robin? A Dannon low-fat yogurts have it, mm. as well as many, note this down, girls. Many brands available in health food stores. Wow. Women have a complicated situation. So that's what, oh, look at you with your epididymitis. All right, one testicle problem in 38 years. <laughs> well, I have one yeast infection. Oh, take it easy. Nobody's accusing anyone. <laughs> now, we'll take a break, Rob, we'll come back to a couple more stories, and then we must grill Gilbert yes. about his fascinating... Yes, we have to the whole oh, thing. God. You know, Gilbert thought he was going to be like Jenny Jones, get on the cover of People magazine, uh -huh. first appendix. I felt so bad watching him lay there in the hospital. I couldn't call the ambulance oh. because it would, I know the front page of the post would have been Godfrey Rush the hospital. Right. I, I, like, I couldn't even make it into the National Lampoon. I know. <laughs> we'll be back. You know, it's amazing. In, in Gilbert Bax. Almost died. Was in the hospital for months. Almost dis disappeared from the entire show business scene. And you know what? The whole show business scene went on. And, <laughs> it, and nothing changed. Nobody noticed. It was unbelievable. It was like, it did it, it, do you realize that your yes. own death would mean nothing? No. <laughs> oh, stop it. No, it would have meant something to us. To us, we like it because Gilbert comes in. Yeah. yeah. Where are you playing? You want to plug yeah. something? No, actually, I don't have anything. Say hi? No, you know I what? have nothing to plug in. Okay. What's no funny is that the other day I was walking down the street and I saw a Gilbert Gottfried poster. You know how they tack up posters all over those construction sites? Yeah. And there's a poster of Gilbert. Really? Out there on the street for They didn't USA. care when I was... Yeah, USA up all night, I'm yeah. back on. Right, right. Yeah, that's an important so show. Yeah, it's a very important show. Yeah, that show almost fell apart when you were in the hospital. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Who pulled I into stopped you? watching. Yeah, they, they were like getting Al Grandpa Lewis. And, right, yeah. yeah. Makes you feel good. Yeah. It makes you feel good to see who replaces you, too, you know? Yeah. It's like, wait a second. I better tune in. They probably got somebody really good to replace yeah. you. Grandpa Al Lewis. It's so, like... Was that who really replaced you? Uh, no, let's see. Oh, they've got people not as big as him. Really? Who was replacing you? Let me see. They they had this group, uh, the Bettys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so we know they, they got out the big guns right. for this, for me. Well, they didn't want you worrying. <laughs> they got Danny Bonaducci. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Big talent. Yeah. <laughs> How to make you feel real good. If, like, if Lyle, Lyle Wagner was off for a week, he'd get bigger press than I did. We'll take a break and be right back with, uh, of course, the recovering Gilbert Gut. We'll have to find out what Gilbert learned from this whole experience. What new philosophy of life he had. Oh, in the hospital, he quoted a lot of philosophy. Yeah, but I want to know what stuck. None of it. <laughs> oh, now he's back to doing the I'm same crummy stuff. Seeing bugs rolling on my ceiling. <laughs> have you changed at all since the... Uh, oh, yes, yes. Really? I'm much deeper now. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll be back right after these words. See about yes. medical, uh, <laughs> medical stuff. This really is like two 90-year-old Jews. I know. Well, Gilbert... 
Gilbert was in the hospital for a month with that appendicitis. And, you know, it really wasn't like he waited too long, Robin. Oh, it wasn't? No, because he did go to a doctor that... Well, that's true. I do remember the whole story where he was going to be checked out, and they were giving him all the barium in, and in every part of his body. And How could you not remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert evidently recited that. It was like a stand-up routine. <laughs> Whoever walked in the room got, got the whole... You had to get every the detail. History. I'm just here to mop up, sir. Oh, At one point, let me tell you something. <laughs> the scariest part was when Gilbert was laying on the floor and you were passed out and you were too busy to even like make a phone call. Yes. Yeah. Remember how long it took him to get from the kitchen to his bedroom? Right. And he because didn't. Because he kept passing out. <laughs> yeah. Every time yes. He tried to move. And of course, he's not calling anybody. Yeah, I was like unconscious on the kitchen floor, then the bathroom floor. So Dominic <laughs> Barber was with me listening to this story and he says to Gilbert, he says, you know, Gilbert didn't want to call like, you know, an emergency medical service uh, ambulance because, you know, it's embarrassing and yeah. stuff. So Dominic goes, Gilbert, for people in Manhattan who live by themselves, you, you can pay a couple of bucks a year and get your own private ambulance. No, service. thanks. I'd rather die. <laughs> and Gilbert would not. Gilbert is the He's cheapest guy in the world. That money. I can't figure out Gilbert. I mean, I got to know Gilbert when he was sick, and I can't figure Gilbert out at all. <laughs> I'm even more I'm confused. I'm more of a mystery. You really are. Well, you did fuel many, many a conversation when we got back. You did. Did you and hear any of our conversations? Oh, one or two. Are. Well, Gilbert was real upset with Gary for not going to the hospital. Oh, Gary just came in here before. And apologized. The break. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was really busy. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't make it for a month yeah. to visit like, you. Like you and Robin both had time to come, and Gary was too busy. <laughs> well, the well, first we time, worked yeah. him awfully hard. Yeah, he's very yeah, busy. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, you don't even, you're not even aware of the fiasco. No. You don't understand. I almost fired Gary over your illness. Uh-huh. Here's what happened. I, sh I got bad it was almost. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I know. And I then, really should have. Then stuttering John was too busy. When we were in the hospital, Gilbert was telling me, uh, and, well, first he called me and was like, oh, you know. I had this picture that Gilbert had no family or anything. <laughs> Gilbert kind of painted a picture that he had yeah. nobody to help him. Yeah, he really knows how to suck people. <laughs> yeah, you really do. And then, of course, I go to see Gilbert, and who's there? His sister, his sister's friend, his girlfriend. I couldn't get in Entertainment the room for tonight. All the <laughs> you couldn't get through all the people. But he suckered me in. So I'm going, Gilbert, anything you need, I'll get. Meanwhile, of course, Gilbert never thinks of picking up a phone and just calling over to Bloomingdale's and getting himself $500 worth of underpants or something. Right. You know, Gilbert would never do that. You are the cheapest man alive. Yes. I'd heard that about yes. you. Yes. <laughs> From Belgium. He's the cheapest man, because, you know, he never gives money to Indonesia. Well, oh, Belgium yeah. told me your apartment is just, um, <laughs> he's the only man alive who's seen Gilbert's, Gilbert's apartment. apartment. It's just his lawn furniture in the apartment. <laughs> You didn't See, I wondered where that came from. You decorated with lawn furniture? I have a hose there and everything. I know. And <laughs> yeah, flamingos in there. He has like a chaise lounge. When did he put up the umbrella? That's what I <laughs> That's during the warmer days. Yeah, but you, you, what, what did you just buy? Lawn furniture? Well, who, who buys? <laughs> <laughs> Barred it from his mom. I rob it from old ladies in that lawn. I think my balls are hurting. <laughs> no, it's hurting on the left side. I can't uh -oh. talk now. My balls are hurting. Something's going on with me. It's spreading. You're turning into Belzer. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Uh -oh, I think I got don't testicle even cancer. Say that. Do you examine yourself once a month? Well, the doctor checked me for testicle cancer. Uh -huh. He rubbed my area. He did? Hey, what doctor did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. Jesus. You know what it is? It's sitting in this hard chair. Yeah. Mind if I stand up for a second? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Up like the top 40 guys. Maybe that's why the top 40 guys do their show standing up. Yeah, they don't have this problem. I don't hear them complaining. Yeah, none of them have testicle problems. <laughs> anyway, so... I'm sitting down. My testicles are fine. Right. <laughs> How's your testicles, Fred? Fine? Yeah. Good. Anyway... <laughs> So I go to see Gilbert in the hospital. You look like a spelling bee. I know. You're standing out with your hands behind your back. I feel like I'm... I'll sit down. This is too weird. There's no pillows around here anywhere? No, Gary, I asked him to bring in my chair for my office for an hour, but he... he just... I'd really like to bring in a pillow, but I've been really busy. I'm really busy doing nothing. I'm sorry. I've been real busy. I'm up on your mail. <laughs> so... Gilbert's initial call to me was a very pathetic one. Oh, right? that's when I still had tubes in my nose. Yeah, I mean, he was like a real mess. Oh, yeah, when Howard got off the phone that first time, <laughs> he was like, man, Gilbert's not going to make it. Yeah, I thought yeah, you were dying. Yeah, I had about five tubes in my nose. But Gilbert, you could have died, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the doctor, somebody told me that when they operated on me, I would have been dead within the hour. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And Gilbert was going through all the heavy things of someone who almost dies. I yeah. mean, he was just like, you know, he was re-examining his career. He's evaluating his life. And it's not a hell of a lot to re-examine. Yeah, and I, mean, and I just said, what is Gilbert going to do if he has to go with the show? I mean, at this point, it's kind of hard to make a yeah, career all, change. all of a sudden, he's going to change career. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I'm right. going to feed yeah. hungry children. Yeah, yeah. 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 you're going to go with Sally Struthers. Yeah. 
please give money. Speaking of Sally Struthers, do you know that she was on the satellite the other day and refused to do an interview with us? No, I didn't know <laughs> because that. Because she heard we were wicked people. And she's still big <gasps> wicked. Yes, yeah, so she went and did interviews. She said, I won't do it with Howard Stern. But she went on all the stations around the country who are my imitators, and they were asking her brutal questions like, "If you're so fat, how come you're so fat and yet you're trying to help starve me?" Good. So yeah, I was so glad because you know I would have said that to her. Yeah, that's right. School ball. You wicked people. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't want to go on. So anyway, yes, yes, I had five I tubes to Robin. in my nose and one tube in my penis. No, you never tube in your penis. I you? did. Yeah, you did? Well, yes. you probably did have that too. Yes. You yeah. never told me that. It was that. like the size of a garden home. Oh, really? Yeah. You never told me that. Stop flattering yourself. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't mean his penis, Rob. I he meant the hose. I didn't say it's fit. Right. <laughs> I guess Gilbert makes up for that lack of physique somewhere. <laughs> That's why those pants look so good. Yeah, no wonder he has to wear sweatpants. Gilbert's trying to go to a more casual look for the show with sweatpants, but he's wearing a man-tailored checkered yeah, shirt. Yeah, he doesn't have that whole thing together. Tucked in. We've got to dress you better. Anyway, so Gilbert was like, uh, I have no one to help me. I said, Gilbert, what about your, you know, your mother, your sister? Uh, they don't come to the hospital. I said, you're kidding. No one's yeah. coming. I haven't seen anybody. They live in Kansas. Yeah. So I'm all I said, if there's anything I can get you, I'll get you. So Gilbert goes, well, I suppose there's some things. I said, you know what, Gilbert? Okay, let me make a list. Yeah. I said, Gilbert, do you have a bathrobe? I'll get you a bathrobe. So I get him a bathrobe. A nice one. Yeah. I get him a really nice bathrobe. That he, when I bring it to the hospital, he opens it and throws it on the floor. <laughs> Just crumples it up in the corner. It was like a really expensive bathrobe that was made out of like sweatpants material. And he goes, well, you know. And meanwhile, his sister and everybody is sitting there. Hi. And he says to me, he turns to me, what I could really use is pajamas. I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm saying to myself. And a sandwich maker. <laughs> yeah, right. And a, and, a sandwich <laughs> and a waffle iron. But I did say to myself at that point, gee, what's with Gilbert and his sister and stuff? Why didn't you ask his sister to get the pajamas? <laughs> what was that all about? She's cheaper than I am. Is, is, that really, is that really what it is? No, no one's cheaper than I am. Because you could have just picked up the phone to Bloomingdale's and say, hey, this is Gilbert Gottfried. I have a credit card. Here's my number. They would have said, who? Send over some pajamas. But Gilbert will never. Th and Gilbert's a wealthy guy. Yeah. He must be. Gilbert makes not a, spending any money. Gilbert makes several hundred thousand dollars a year. This is not a guy who doesn't have money. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. But you're trying to save every penny. You don't have any expenses except food and stuff. You don't go on dates. You don't have well, any clothes. wife. You don't have kids. And I spend a lot on wardrobe. He really has like a depression mentality. Yeah. And he, you weren't in the depression. <laughs> <laughs> he's in a constant depression. That's why he's on Prozac. <laughs> so anyway, so I said to myself, hey. Maybe he's got a weird relationship with his family yeah. or something. Let me get the pajamas. So I said, okay, I'll get a pair of pajamas. Then Gilbert goes, this is from the deathbed. He goes, the kind of pajamas, <laughs> the kind, the kind of pajamas with the string because I have a wound and an open wound. They can't cause it. Kind of pajamas with a string. So he couldn't use the elastic. Right. No, I'll tell you, that even hurts. Well, wait a second. These hurt. Okay, go I ahead. I sent Ganji yeah. out. All right. Oh, that's why you're wearing sweatpants because you're scarred. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I said, oh, I said, oh, 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 boy, oh, you know, that's a big story I have going on. I'm a little pain to do cocaine. Really sorry you were near death. You know? <laughs> Isn't it funny when you're near death? Hey, David Brenner doing a routine. You know when your stomach starts touching blood out of it? Huh? Huh? That was, that was, huh? When you were passed out, were you like spitting up blood and stuff? Uh, a lot of stuff was happening. Really? Not <laughs> everything. Yeah, I had that big tube in my, well, I Small tube in my penis. But <laughs> so anyway, basically the size of a straw. But well, let's continue this, Robin. When <laughs> to we be get, honest, I'll tell you the whole pajama story, and then uh, we can go on right after these words. Hi, this is St. Paul from Gary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, brother, fact. I got to tell you something about brother facts. A new series of fax machines are on. Do you actually have a fax machine? Oh yeah. You probably don't. Yeah. You're too cheap to buy one. Yeah. If you won't buy pajamas for yourself. You're not gonna, <laughs> If I could have pajamas faxed in, I'd buy one. Gibber was wearing, like, you know, the hospital gown. Yes. That's a humiliating thing <laughs> for a month. Hey, anyway, I think I saw your ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Wait, you missed, uh, we, we should say what Gary said. Gary walked in here before and says, Wow, pillow for a ball? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. Gary just got me a pillow for my uh, ball. Oh, good. Does it feel better? Pillow yeah. for your balls. <laughs> here, let me, let me give you a pillow for your balls. What a, what a job he's got. Yes. Hey, anyway, let me tell you about Brother Facts. They have, if anybody knows about faxes, have you ever read a fax? They're all curled up. They yes. come out curled up like this. And you try yes, to unscroll like my them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you try to uncurl them and everything, but you can't. Not your testicles. <laughs> Talk about the Brother Facts. 
Well, this fax machine is so good, it has anti-curl system built in every fax. <laughs> All right, Gilbert. Every, we should go back in the hospital. Every fax is flat. He has a character. Yeah. And the Cape Fear. What are you saying? <laughs> every fax is flat, Gilbert. Every fax is flat. I mean it. <laughs> hey, maybe a fax machine isn't important to you, but it's important to me. I use a fax machine. The brother fax is good. It has auto smoothing, pre programmed super cover page, auto smoothing, memory speed dial, auto feeder, auto cutter, streamlined and very, very good looking. A hip, it says it's a hip streamlined design. Yes, it is. That's a very hip machine. Uh, Brother Fact is really great. And it has the anti curl system available at Staples, JR Music World, and nobody beats the Wiz. Gilbert Gottfried here, back from his near death experience. Anyway, to make a long story short. Oh, for your balls, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, my left ball hurts. What's going on with me? Come on, pillow for your left ball, Walt. I don't think you're taking care of yourself like your mother said. Yeah, my mother must be right. Anyway, so I said, okay, Gilbert wants special pajamas. I'll get them because it's no big deal. So I sent Ganji out to buy the special pajamas with the drawstring and everything else. And I said to Ganji and uh, Gary, just get these over to Gilbert as quick as possible. I made sure they bought them the next day. Mm -hmm. And I left it at that. Gary comes in like three days ago and tells me he never sent you the pajamas. Well, after we had been bad-mouthing you yeah. on the air for not ever calling to Look. thank him. There they are. Oh. Yeah, they and are. they're nice ones, too. Christian Dior. <laughs> Wouldn't you have liked to have had those in the hospital? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, I was, I was, I was getting a pillow for, for how it falls. <laughs> so then I said, you know, I said, boy, Gilbert, what a little rat bastard. Because after I sent over the pajamas, Gilbert calls me up and goes, I need... A digital thermometer. So I Rectal. Said, <laughs> I said, this is it. I said, Gilbert is using me at this point. Yeah. He's got his sister. He's got all these people. I said, Gilbert. I need a VCR. Yeah, right. <laughs> I said, Gilbert, a digital <laughs> thermometer? You're going to make me run over all over town? You, I said, isn't there a drugstore near your apartment where when you go home, they can... Get, you, know, you can buy a digital thermometer. I why were you even worried about the digital thermometer? I need a stereo TV set. Yeah, why were you worried about a digital thermometer? I didn't. I was going home. The day nurse I told him to get one. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And weren't you going to have somebody taking care of you at home? They, I wound up having somebody. Well, I had, like, the visiting. I didn't know. They told me, you should get a thermometer and watch your temperature every oh, minute. Dear. So Gilbert needed a digital temperature readout. So I said, you know, I said, Gilbert, all you have to do is a drugstore down in the in the um pharmacy. in the pharmacy. Yeah. And there's a pharmacy right in the hospital. Just pick up the phone and call and have them deliver all right, it. Get the thermometer. No. Get me a suit. So Gilbert, <laughs> goes, Gilbert goes, I can't call that. It would be much better if you called. <laughs> I said, Oh my god. Or you think how it has some special pull. Yeah, no, you know what it was? Either Gilbert didn't want to spend the money for the thermometer. You got it to be honest with me, just once. Come on. I was a pretty good guy to you. I did get yes. your pajamas. They didn't yes. get it. I almost fired Gary. Granted, they I uh, was it that you were too cheap or you just they're shy? Size now. Are you just one of those guys who's like totally shy about calling a drugstore? Oh, yeah. Is that what I'm it like, was? Yeah, I don't know how to go about it. He doesn't know how to do, like, everyday business. Yeah. yeah. I had that feeling. Like, how do you call information? Yeah, right. So <laughs> I said to Gilbert, I said, Gilbert, when you get home, isn't there a drugstore near your apartment? He goes, there are no drugstores in my apartment. <laughs> I go, no, what? Yeah, I talk like Stephen Wright. Yeah, I said, wait, there is, there when you're no sick, well, you did. Store. You know? did. Don't be a wise guy. No, I know. There, there are no <laughs> drugstores near my apartment. Then how do you know that you have drugs? So it got real <laughs> awkward, our phone conversation. I said, Gilbert, I am not getting, my wife is in the background yelling, tell him, no, you're not getting it. Put your foot down. <laughs> Because he's just using you at this point. I, say, say, I mean, he does have a sister and stuff. Why did you call your sister? Because she, she knows you. She yes, wouldn't have gotten it yes. for you. <laughs> so, let you do it and I was being tremendous to him. I mean, I was a good friend. I got she, Dice Clay to call him. I got everyone to call you. I got Penn and Teller to come over yeah. and visit you. I mean, I was being a good yeah. pal. But, uh, oh, my God, Gilbert was going to use it. And these people have careers. Gilbert saw me as a sucker, I think. <laughs> did you see me as a sucker? <laughs> Did you? Oh, oh, why Why should that be the beginning? <laughs> I don't know what it was. So I just got totally fed up. Yeah. How'd you ever get a digital thermometer? What happened? Oh, I just wound up getting one. How'd you get it? From the nurse? Uh, no, I think I got it for one from Imus. <laughs> oh, really? Where'd you get it? No, you I get just, it? yeah. I just, the uh, nurse bought a thermometer. I knew it. He was just sending me all over town, and my wife even said, I Gilbert is passive-aggressive. Yeah. 
And I told you he was not possibly going home alone. Right. The nurse would have to. And you say, you know, you say to Gilbert, Gilbert's like not an aggressive guy. You don't see him as being aggressive, but he's passive aggressive. Right. He gets so needy. <laughs> Boy, I have a whole theory on your personality now. And you, you're the worst kind of person for him to be around because I'm an you enabler. feed right into it. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on Sally Jesse Raphael. Yeah. I'm an enabler. Because everybody was telling from. you, yep. tell him no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because he was going to have me start going buying him underpants and yeah, stuff. Yeah, the, the requests were becoming more and more bizarre. Because all I know is I was feeling really bad after I visited Gilbert Get in the hospital. A virtual reality machine. <laughs> I, go out, I go out in the hall and Dominic looks at me and bursts into laughing. He goes... <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> he's pathetic. I go, why, I go, why is that, Dominic? He's p pajamas, he's asking you. What a schnurrer. I go, I go, I know. He says, because I was thinking, oh, okay. He goes, the guy can pick up a phone and get 500 pairs of pajamas. For God's sake. For God's sake. What a weird guy. Dominic goes. Bella. Dominic was like, what a weird guy. <laughs> But he wanted to come back and visit him. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Dominic has a hard on for anybody who has a celebrity. But, you know, so you should have stuck with Dominic. Me. He would have gotten all the things for you. Yeah. Oh, Dominic yeah. would have taken you home. Dominic was going to get his Amos, his famous Amos and Andy tape and set up uh, Gilbert with a VCR. Gilbert was too cheap to get a uh, no, TV in his yeah. room. Get my own VCR. Right. Can we have this? <laughs> but uh, anyway, it was like real weird with you. Yeah. The best yeah. part of the whole thing was, though, that Gilbert lost his sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert that was real, the serious laugh. Gilbert. There was no laughter, no smile. <laughs> no joke. Oh, I serious I, Gilbert. There was no joke. That's the, the worst part. Even if I wanted a laugh, my stomach used to like get over <laughs> it. And what was even funnier was we, we got to talk to Gilbert in his real voice. Yes. Yeah. It was like, you know, we'd go to the hospital and say, hey, Gilbert, how you doing? And would be like, um, <laughs> <laughs> things are, um, uh, Things are pretty rough right now. <laughs> uh, I just passed out on the floor. And it was like the real, you know, it wasn't like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, it wasn't yeah. any of that. Oh, well, oh, Howard, I was pretty near death for a while. Yeah. Right? And the uh, other thing was, you know. We're coming on 3 o'clock, and that was the best of uh, Steely Dan. Mm. He kept telling us he was going to be in the hospital for months, and two weeks later he was out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> with the digital thermometer. Right. So you finally sprung for some money and got yourself a nurse to take care of you? Uh, no, the, the nurses, they send like for about. 20 minutes a day, you know, just oh. to change the dressing. And how'd you, how'd you feed yourself and all that? Uh, how'd you get food? It wasn't, uh, I don't know. I used to, like, walk around and start grabbing things. Uh, oh, I see. Did anybody help you? Was that, who was that girl who was in the hospital with you? That's what I wanted to ask you. That blonde. Is that your girlfriend? Why, you like her? She was cute. Yeah. What was her story? She was like, like, like Gilbert's girl. Gilbert. And it was well, real weird. Gilbert, would, Gilbert, always, Gilbert would not introduce me to her. Really? He didn't even tell me her name. It was like she was sitting right there, and I go, hi, how are you doing? And I introduced myself, and uh -huh. no, and after she left, Gilbert would not mention what the relationship was with her. Nothing. It was really weird. Well, that I was like a you. play unfolding. Because he kept saying during his story of how he was laying in the apartment yeah. for days, yeah. right. there would always be this girl was coming to see me. He right. didn't say my girlfriend was coming over. Yeah. This right. girl would come Robin to Robin thought me. it was the Virgin Mary. <laughs> I thought it was a big <laughs> And I was kind of shocked, too, because you never get to see Gilbert's personal life. He's very, you know, he's very private. Yeah. Yes. And he makes it like he doesn't get girls. But meanwhile, this was a decent-looking girl. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she was really cute. And some, some girl that he picked up in some comedy club. Sure. I know. Probably. Some little bim or something. I was thinking. But she seemed pretty intelligent. She didn't seem like some not, dummy. Not if she's staying with me. She's Are you not. thinking of marrying her now? Because uh, I know. Because that... you don't want to be alone. No, see now I'm well. <laughs> yeah, right. She should have got you while you were weak. Was that your girlfriend? I hope... What is it, Gary? Oh, good. Saved by Gary. You want to know where Gilbert really got a thermometer from? Where? Push down that button. Oh, it's probably the nurse. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. I know who this Howard. is. I snored her. Who Gilbert. is this? Who is this? My name's Jane. Hi, Jane. Now, how did you get the thermometer for well, it? Tell Gilbert. Ask Gilbert if he uh, remembers me already. I definitely remember. So what's this up, this is how I got the thermometer. Why don't you, I can tell, why don't you tell the truth? She she came into the room. Yeah. Who am I? Yeah, uh, Dr. Jane. Right. She's yes. a doctor? She's a doctor. She's Wait a second, Gilbert. This is what's great. Now I can tell you're really nervous when real stories start coming out because it starts like talking yes. real loud yes. and trying to drown her out. No, no. Tell let a me, story. Let me talk to Dr. Jane. Now, yes. how did you, how did uh, Gilbert get the, how did he weasel a thermometer out of you? I definitely did too. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Jane? Not only did he weasel it out of me, the first one was defective. I had to get him a different one. Oh, <laughs> what no. did he do? Like, you came in and you said... No, he... I say I defended him in the hospital. I felt bad because he looked really sick. And I'll tell you one thing. Did, and did he go, uh, excuse oh, me, no, uh, actually, what how he did... would I go about mm -hmm. getting a, a digital thermometer? No, that's not what he did. Oh. 
Actually. It actually sounds like emo when he's sick. <laughs> Hi, hey, wonderful mama. Ooh. No, that's not what, no, actually it wasn't like that at all. What happened? Actually, I, I, I went to visit him because I knew he was there. Right. And so I told him, you know, he looks sick. <clears throat> so, that's, that's a doctor's I, opinion, right? right? <laughs> so I look, look sick. sick. I'm a layman, and I knew that. Wait, I, I weigh two pounds to and was too. bleeding. But wait I a second. Sick. <laughs> I wasn't taking care of him, so I had gone to visit him, and um, he looked sick, and I felt bad because I like him. Right. And, I, you know, I think he's a nice guy. Right. So we were talking, and I said, well, listen, if you need something, give me a call. That's so, a fatal word. That's, uh -oh. what, wait, <laughs> that's what I did. He called me up. Wait, let me tell you the story. Just reel her in now. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Gilbert, don't worry. I won't tell any secrets, okay? Yeah. yeah. Gilbert? Yes. Okay, no secrets. Just about the thermometer. Go ahead. So he tells me, um, he cages me one day. Uh -oh. The day before he's leaving, I get a call. Right. I'm, I said, hello? He said, hello, Dr. So-and-so? Right. I said, yeah. He said, this is Gilbert Gottfried. And I said, oh, how you doing? I was so surprised that he called me. I didn't right. think he would. Right. He said, listen. Can you get me a thermometer? Oh boy! So I was, I was. First of all, I was on call that day. Yeah, he was mad at me because I wouldn't get him the thermometer. I finally put my foot down. I said, "This guy, you know, Gilbert has got to pick up the phone." I said, "Gilbert, you can just pick up the phone and get the drugs. It would be more of a pain in the ass for me." You don't know what he. You don't know. What Go ahead. We'll get I to it. I, I said to him, "A thermometer? Okay, I'll try to get you one." So I figured he, I could try to get him. Excuse me, get him a regular thermometer. And I wasn't able to. Right. And I was on call, so I'm doing like all my work during the day, and I'm on call to the to the night. To Gilbert, that doesn't matter. No, and, wait. If something and is, then, if something then is inconsequential as a thermometer, he'll make you go to all ends of the wait, earth. I visited. I went back to the room, and I told him, "Listen, I can't get my hands on a thermometer." Right. So he told me, "You know what? I think I want a digital thermometer." <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> so yeah, I forgot to him, tell you. So wait, and in Manhattan, they're like no drugstores open it. At night that I could find. I mean, Harlem? that even knew of. Uh -huh. What is that, Gilbert? Did you travel up to Harlem? Yes, I think there's an all night to, uh, one there. Yeah, yeah. Gilbert thinks nothing of that. But so. There's one in so Connecticut. Wait, so what I did, <laughs> yeah. he was being discharged the next day. Right. So I said, no way am I going to find the thermometer tonight. I told him, look, I could drive all over Manhattan. I don't know if I'll find it. Good. Can you wait till tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. I said to him, can you wait till tomorrow? I'll get you. I can either get you a regular thermometer or you wait till tomorrow. I'll get you a uh, digital. Hell no, so bitch. So he was like. Now. What? Right, go ahead. Yeah. Hell no, bitch. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so he told me. And I, I said, okay, no. He said, but I'm going home tomorrow. Oh, and I said, man. Okay. He's such a worm. He wanted, and it was Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, Thanksgiving Day, right. Yeah. I remember because that's when he wanted that's to meet right. again. Exactly. So right. what did I do? Yeah. The next, he wanted me to bring it to the house. I said, listen, how about if you go home, I'll bring it to you. He said, you would do that? I said, sure, why not? I said, I want you to have a good memory of the hospital. Could you bring a stereo, too? He asked me for a stereo. I told him that was the hell. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You're a sucker like I am. I know. Because but all you he had what? to do was call a drugstore. They would have delivered it. Uh, well, yeah, but, you know, it's okay. You feel bad for him. That's what he got. Uh, so he scoops you yeah. in. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I think that he had a, a negative experience, and I told him I wanted him to have something good. To oh, remember. he had a fine experience. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was, was alive. Call, yeah. <laughs> he was alive. They, you saved his life. <laughs> like a week in Miami. He had a bad experience. <laughs> Believe yeah. me, he just, he just gets a whole, you know, but I always wait, wondered I, how he'd get the thermometer. I bring him the thermometer the next day. Yeah, what did he say? What can you get me? It, it didn't work. <laughs> and oh, it was a regular it, one, it, too, it I think. a temperature of like 94. <laughs> yeah. And it wouldn't go up. <laughs> That, so, that's the story of my life. So you I had know. to go, wouldn't go off. So you had to go get him another one. That at so I got him a different thermometer. Oh my my God. husband tried it first. <laughs> and then I brought it to him. <laughs> and you know what? What? After I brought it to him. What did he want? Imagine how many, really, it was a big issue with him, the thermometer, when I finally brought it to him. And I, I used, you know, I, I think he's a nice guy, so I would visit him because <laughs> I felt bad. Right. And, uh, you know, I thought he was interesting. Right. He never even tried it. He never used it. He never used it. Oh, my glad I didn't go get it. Because it would have been a major hassle. It was the beginning of the Thanksgiving vacation. I would have had to come no, into the I city and get it to Gilbert. I did bring, bring me a video cam. I didn't Gilbert, bring you are an incredible man. Day. What? The, the replacement thermometer I brought to him a few days later. Yeah. And, and then after that, he just lost all interest in the thermometer. Well, thanks for the call. Okay. Thanks, doctor. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Thank you, doctor. Yeah, let me tell you, doctor. We're both suckers. <laughs> well, he's 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 pretty interesting. He's did he at least thank you? Did he thank you for it? Um, I don't know, Gilbert. Did you thank me? No, I no. I he doesn't thank you for something else. Gilbert. He never he never thanked yeah. me for the robe. Oh, he didn't thank you. <laughs> no, or the pajamas. But it turns out he didn't get I, those. And remember yeah. the other cool move Gilbert would have? You sit there and talk to him for a while, and then you say, "Well, Gilbert, I gotta go." And he'd say, oh, wait a second. could you move that table before you leave? You know, right. he'd always give you some job. A task. Just could before you, you go. Could right. you carry well, the, the luggage out? 
Why? He asked you to clean, clean the house. <laughs> he asked you to clean his no, house? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Could you do the dishes? <laughs> that, that just shows that you made a joke and you believe it. Yeah, like, I do, but I would believe it. Yeah. Like, nothing's too exaggerated. <laughs> hey, Gilbert. Yes. I'm, how come you don't give me a call? Because he's, he's done with you. He's used you. Oh, you can't? He's healthy now. He doesn't need you anymore. Is that why? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, of course. Are you all better? You didn't what? do anything. You don't have a radio show. You, you can't visit you. <laughs> all right, doctor, I got to go. Okie dokie. All right, bye-bye. Doctor comes over and helps him get some digital yeah. thermometer. She's running all around. She figures, hey, now I'll have a friend for a celebrity. <laughs> but she realizes Gilbert. Yeah. Gilbert uses her up and throws her out. Oh, Gilbert, you've got some story. <laughs> you've got something locked in your head. I don't even want to know. Mother, mother, <laughs> mother, mother. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> There's blood everywhere. <laughs> mother, mother, the, the girl. <laughs> oh, man. Gilbert. <laughs> Never get sick again. People see too much of you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> too many insights. But then again, it was interesting. It was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How's the bathroom? Do you use it at all? Oh, uh, yeah. Do you? Good. Yeah. Well, at least I know it's not going to waste. He almost wore it here. Just to prove I know. That. <laughs> what is but it, Doug? Oh, 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 oh. Another pill for your bald spot. <laughs> I don't know if you're interested, but uh, you've been getting um, a lot of reporters are calling to talk to you to get a comment from you because this thing just came over the wire about. Uh, I guess there was this FCC ban on on the different hours. Right. You know, they want to regulate hours, and the Supreme Court turned it down. In other words, oh, yeah? So that means we're what? We can talk dirty now? Oh, yeah. vagina. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the only oh, don't I, say that in front of me. The yeah. only reason I bring that up is that uh, NBC, CNN, and Unistar and AP have already all called you for comments. So I had a phone number for a woman from NBC if you were giving comments. Oh, yeah? Hey, let me come up with a comment. <laughs> That's funny. Comment. Want to call him, Robin? I don't know. I'm let sick. Can you send me a vagina? Yeah, maybe it's better. We're still in litigation, aren't we? Yes, we are. Well, this particular ruling actually doesn't affect our litigation. Doesn't affect us at all. Yeah. Let's see. Government arguments for restoring a ban on indecent radio and TV broadcasts have gotten a cold shoulder from the Supreme Court. Oh, thank God. See, I thought that the people on the Supreme Court that we were finished. No, they've been basically telling the FCC they can't regulate hours of time in the day where you could say certain things. The justices have voted against hearing an appeal. Oh, no wonder. They probably just want to ban all free speech on the radio. Well, that's what they were trying to do. And yeah. then the Supreme Court said, no, you can't do that. So they came back with the after midnight thing and right. before, what was it, midnight to eight or something? Midnight to eight, you can be dirty. And then the Supreme Court said, that's ridiculous, too. Yeah. Anyway, the justices have voted against hearing an appeal that sought to reimpose such a ban. The decision let's stand the ruling that around the clock ban violates free speech rights. Good. Okay. So that's, I think that's good. Who even knows? I that don't could, know what it means to us. It doesn't mean anything to us because we don't speak indecently on the radio. Right. That's our contention. So why are we call? Why are they calling us for comments? So why don't I call them and say why are you calling me? I don't do anything indecent. I have a post reporter on the phone as well. Do you, who do you want to talk to? Should I tell him? I'm going to tell him I have no quote. All right, Gary, here, you tell him as I dictate it to you. Okay, let me transfer first. Why should I be the one to, to have a quote? Yeah, all of a sudden it looks like you're an indecent broadcaster. They come running to you for quotes as a result of this ban being lifted. Yeah, I don't want to talk to him. Hmm. Oh, we got to still call Seinfeld. Hey, Gilbert, you get on the phone and okay. tell me you need a digital thermometer. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> I'll let Gary handle it. I'll, t I'll feed him like a puppet. All right. All right. Watch how I handle this. Gary, here. Now, you just repeat what I say. Okay. All right. You know, you know what? Tell, him, tell him he's on the radio. He knows he's going to be on. He can okay. hear you right now. Okay. And you say to him, I'm sorry. Gilbert, please. <laughs> we have to help. No, Gary, you're just making sure he's got everything. You say, <laughs> Gilbert, <laughs> I'll punch you in the stomach if you don't shut up. Um, say, uh, sir, Howard, I don't know why you're calling Howard. <coughs> Everything Howard does, uh, Howard doesn't do anything that's indecent or obscene. All right. Yeah. Everyone happy with that? Fred, you happy with that? <laughs> Robin, you happy with that? Yes. Yeah. Fred, what? So why are you calling me? I'm oh, not well. happy. Yeah, why are you calling Howard? He's not. Okay. Yeah, why would I have a comment? Tell me he's on the air. Hi, Paul, you're on the air. Yeah. Can you hear? Howard, how are you? Good. This is Gary. Uh, Howard just dictated a, a quote to me to give to you. Are you ready? Shoot. Okay, Howard does not do anything indecent or obscene, so why are you calling me for a comment? 
Because how is the elder, how is the elder statesman of New York radio? He's the best thing in New York, and what Howard says, everybody listens to. His comments are important. Uh -huh. no, don't fall for it. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, please. Okay. Don't fall for it, Howard. No, They're I know. Gonna take That's your totally comments right. and use them. I want to say something. Now you've learned what the press does. They yeah. compliment <laughs> you, and then when you read the article, they bash you over the head. But then you start feeling comfortable. The guy likes me. It's yeah. gonna be a good article. Why don't you call Phil Donahue? He does constant penis references. Why not call Hard Copy, Paramount Productions, who sits there and does a sex story every night on TV that's 50 times more outrageous than what we do? Why not call Oprah Winfrey? But they don't call Oprah Winfrey. You know why? Because she has a therapist on the right. set, so therefore it's In the last five minutes of the show. Right. They can even call Studs, who was actually on late at night and affected by the band. Right. We are not affected by the band. Okay. You tell the guy that was all the statement we had, because if I put okay. I I got it. Hi, are you there? I heard everything. That is all the statement we have. That's it? That's it. Now write something bad about me. Howard, I'm never going to write something bad about well, you. I'll see you tomorrow in the post. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. You know to be bad boy of radio, Howard Stern Cleared. Says. Cleared temporarily, but mm -hmm. evil forces will win out. Right. Oh, my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a mattress for your balls, Paul? <laughs> a mattress? Uh, a mattress. Oh, a mattress. A mattress for your balls? What? That's a pretty good Gary impression, Gilbert. That might be your best one. <laughs> oh, we still have to call Seinfeld. I'm not calling him today. I've had it. My ass hurts. Robin, let's finish up with the news. Hurts. Why is it that your ass always hurts? Why right. did your balls hurt? Right. Why, is, Why, it Why is it? Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> now he's got now he's got his leg up on the Gilbert, please. <laughs> What? Why is that funny? I don't know. We didn't laugh at you when you were sitting there in your little chair. Yeah, with your little chair like an old, a 90-year-old man. <laughs> yeah, but this is an interesting pose. <laughs> hmm. I don't know why that's exciting. Because I think Gilbert's a homosexual. Yeah, I'm looking at my crotch. Yes. <laughs> Who's that girl that was in your uh, hospital room? Is that I your girlfriend? No girl. Was it, is that really your girlfriend? Oh, I didn't expect to get a straight answer. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Gilbert, just one. Who was it? I don't even know. Well, all the wonderful girlfriend? things we did for you. Oh, that was someone who was out there to get me a thermometer. Because you make it like you don't get laid and you don't get girls, but she was cute. Boy, who'd believe that? And not only that, she wasn't like a like she wasn't like some showgirl she wasn't stripper. Was crazy? No, she was like a normal, nice girl. I mean, she was really sweet. So why won't you own up to her? Why won't you acknowledge her? You won't acknowledge her? <laughs> me, I never acknowledge. I bet he hasn't even told his mother he has a girlfriend. The whole time he mother. was talking about it, mother, mother, he kept saying. It's there was Horrible. a girl coming over to take care of me. I'm like, yeah, what girl. girl would be coming over to take care yeah, of me? She was holding the baby Jesus. Gilbert uh -huh. has such a weird explanation over that illness. It's like, the, like he has to open up to you. Yeah. Because he's telling you this story about, oh, uh, some girl was over there. There was this girl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your explanation of, of you with that appendicitis is unbelievable. <laughs> some girl, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I guess it means a girlfriend. Right. And then, just as luck would have it, she came into the room, I think. And a man with green skin followed me. And then she was, like, really involved in Gilbert's life. And I kept calling him, and then I came over, and I brought him some soup. This is a and, girlfriend. And I was like, oh, this is a girlfriend, but Gilbert won't even let me right. even kiss her goodbye or anything. <laughs> because during the whole story, he kept saying, well, there was this girl, and... And I thought of, and I tried to call the girl, that way. No. and you know, she was calling me, and she said that I should just take, I should not take a hot bath, but I took a hot bath anyway. And then I passed out in the bathtub. <laughs> I mean, it's like a whole. I was like, Gilbert, can you can you shorten this story up a little bit? We all have lives to lead. Right, I gotta get out of yeah, here. Yeah, man, we. Gilbert was desperate to have a safe. He gave us every detail of his illness. It's like an interview on current affairs. <laughs> the whole time I was laying there, I was like. What is the meaning all of I life? Could, all <laughs> I could think about was Murray the Kay. <laughs> anyway, Robin, what else is in the 20 movie? men and women put to death during the 17th century in the uh, Salem witch trials were honored on Sunday. <laughs> Gilbert likes that. <laughs> At a special memorial, the 300th anniversary of the start of the Salem witch trials. Gilbert's a big Salem witch trial fan. Yes. So up in Salem, they had bells tolling. Bells? Hey, babe. Yes. Hey, babe. Yes. The bells. Hey, like, like, I love the way they're going to wipe out all the witches. You know, but meanwhile, the whole Bush administration. Yeah, sure. Thank they're you. now pretty sure that these people got very little in terms of trials and were put to death. So this is like new? <laughs> <laughs> Why are people concentrating on this? <laughs> They were put to death um, illegally. Oliver Stone should do a film about it. So here we go. Here are the bells tolling to he, honor. He, meanwhile, back to the... 
This is honoring people put to death because they were... Salem with All right. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> the story can finally be told. I just thought it was interesting. I'm waiting for something to happen here, Robin. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. It's just a bell. Take you, Eddie! Meanwhile, biker veterans from around the country gathered in Daytona Beach, Florida this weekend. Hey, Gilbert's going up there. Yes, <laughs> To air evidence supporting claims that U.S. military personnel who vanished in the Korean and Vietnam wars are still alive and to pressure the government to resolve the issue. The rally also focused on the poor treatment of uh, veterans. Adrian Krenauer, the guy who was um, associated with Good Morning Vietnam, I guess he was that DJ. Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah, he told the crowd gathered that the portrayal of veterans in the media is inaccurate. I never met a single murderer. I never met a single baby killer or a single rapist or a single drug addict or a single malcontent. Well, I met a lot of good and honorable men and women who might not have been too thrilled about where they found themselves, but were bound and determined to do their duty as well and as professionally as they could. And that is the story that has not gotten out. Play a record. <laughs> Too bad. I'm sorry he feels that way. That's right. I Meanwhile. don't even know what he said. <laughs> was he looking at Gilbert? Well, I guess he's uh, basically saying that all the Vietnam vets he sees on TV are either dope addicts, maniacs. Oh, yeah. Murderers. I know what he means. Yeah. That's why a lot of people won't even vote for Bob Terry. Seriously. Because he got the Medal of Honor. Yeah, I think people are like, oh, man. I don't know. Yeah. It reminds us too much of Vietnam. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Well, you're in trouble if you didn't go, and you're in trouble if you did. Right. <laughs> you can't win either way. Uh, Joan London is uh, interviewed in People magazine this week. What's her beef? Well, you know, she's you getting know a divorce. You know what my beef is? What's your beef? You have a baby. You know what I mean, Howie? You have a baby. Yes, so Joan London... You know, she's getting a divorce. There's always got to be something you're dealing with in life. If right. it's not your breath getting hard... It's that uh, you can't eat or you're breaking up a marriage. So you have to do that in public, too. She's dating Alan Thick, I think. Well, she says, no, that's a load of... Uh, BS? Yeah. That she doesn't know this man from a, a load of wood, she says. Hey, I'm doing it with June Lynn. <laughs> hey, Alan, you're, you're a bachelor around town now. Yeah, I'm getting uh, June Lynn up there in the kitchen. Well, who would you think would be the first person you would tell if you decided to get a divorce? Alan Thick. People magazine. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about, you know, you're yeah. at home. I would tell my wife. Really? Yeah. Well, Joan told her nanny first. Her nanny? Yeah. Hey, nanny, nanny. <laughs> <laughs> then she went and told her husband, and then she and her husband went and talked to their children together. She says it wasn't that they were fighting, they just didn't talk. Somehow or other, i got to read this article because what she says is that in 1987, she realized the marriage had soured. Right. She and her husband went for counseling, and she dropped 45 pounds. Hmm. Subconsciously, subconsciously, she says, I might have been getting ready for whatever was to come. Like dating. Right. My husband, I think, really couldn't quite understand the whole thing. I think he wondered who is this new person. Who's this new person? Yeah. Just because she lost the weight. So anyway, they're now getting a divorce, and uh, she's going to be a free woman again. But she's Gilbert. not dating yeah. Alan. Lee? If um, <laughs> if Joan's listening, Gilbert's available, and do you have a digital thermometer <laughs> and a bathrobe? All right. And Joan London is um, wall. she's she's pretty hot, man. I wouldn't mind bagging her. Well, she's available. I wouldn't mind doing her. <laughs> really? I mean, that would be fun. I, I'd do the one with the claws. Brie Walker. Yeah. Oh, who wouldn't? <laughs> I hear her marriage is on the rocks, too. Well, that's the rumor. Gee whiz. That... <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> you can't say that. You ask for her to touch you in a certain area, oh. then it's all over. Yes. So wait a minute. <laughs> who knows who's leaving who? She left her first husband for another guy. Yeah, maybe she's leaving him. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Meanwhile, just imagine you're uh, Jerry Hall and you have to hear stories like this. Wait a second. Let me imagine I'm Jerry Hall for a second. <laughs> okay, okay. Got it now? Okay. Got all it. right. Mick Jagger's, uh, Mick Jagger's wife? Yes. I have huge breasts and really long and legs? And all of his kids. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Mick Jagger is back to his womanizing ways, according to some of Britain's tabloid newspapers. Jagger, who became a dad for the fifth uh, time six weeks ago, has apparently been spending his days and nights with a beautiful young 18 or 19-year-old girl. Yes. Nice. on some paradise island while his wife Jerry is holidaying with their baby daughter Georgia May several thousand miles away 
uh, in the Caribbean. Right. The girl reportedly shared a mixed uh, hideaway holiday bungalow, and they only ever left the place to visit a local nightclub where he publicly hugged and kissed the unidentified girl. Now, that's the life I need. Boy, oh boy. Imagine doing nothing all day, just hugging and kissing girls. And, oh. <laughs> oh, man, it'd be great. Hugging and kissing but I girls. said you're supposed to imagine that you're Jerry Hall. Jerry Hall got what she wanted. She got Mick Jagger. She's got all his money. She's set for life. And she's got his kids. They don't even know if that marriage is legal. She got married by some witch doctor. Yeah, she jumped over a broom. <laughs> I don't know how uh, legitimate that is. <laughs> so again, just imagine you're Jerry Hall. Oh, I got you. <laughs> Mr. Rogers says his neighborhood wouldn't exist as we know it. If, if they were was... watching it. <laughs> 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 if he had to establish his TV career today. Right. He says his low-key approach to children's shows wouldn't cut the mustard these days. No, you have to, you, he, even Mr. Rogers would have to be raunchier. You think so? Hi, today my special guest is Gilbert Gottfried to talk about his appendicitis. <laughs> <laughs> he says that, uh... Hi, Gilbert. Hi, Mr. Rogers. Gilbert, I understand you're reevaluating your life. Is yeah, that true? Can you get me a stereo system? Sure. I feel like I'm at the night of the improv. You know, I'm doing improv with Gilbert. Yeah. Sure. Okay, now, you're you're a sailor, and you're on the moon. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy, it's sure lonely here on the moon. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Mr. Robin. Rogers says he once discussed uh, a new kids program with some TV executives, and they suggested he wear some kind of costume. Yeah. How's instead that of his trademark sweater. Sure, G-string, like a Chippendale dancer. <laughs> Hi, boys and girls. I've had a secret juxta. <laughs> I, I was told by the network I'd have to get dirtier. So what we're going to do today is talk about yeast infection on a vagina. <laughs> How's that? Okay, girls. Can you let's, say yeast? Let's hear your vaginas breathe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's good. Breathe harder. Get those vaginas breathing in. <laughs> <I'm dead wrong. laughs> the godfather of soul, James Brown, says his new mission is to help New York City kids <laughs> feel good about themselves. Oh, them God. So they'll end the violence in their classrooms. He says he'll appear at a benefit to raise money for the city's children, and he hopes other performers will join. For a the guy festival. out of jail is going to stop violence. The show, tentatively set for June, was proposed in the wake of last week's fatal shooting of two students at a Brooklyn school. We didn't, li we didn't listen to our James Brown tapes today. Right. We'll do that tomorrow. He also says he plans to visit the school next week to urge students to develop their minds. Right on. So they feel the need to have guns around. Good for him. He's doing the right thing, Robin. I just, like I said, hope they understand what he's saying. Yeah, I think uh, ghetto youths understand him. <laughs> the rest you know, of us but, you know, I think he doesn't inner seem inner like a guy children. who <laughs> had a lot of education. He's going to tell them that education is important? No, unless he could sing. Well, is that what's happening, Robin? That's what's happening. All right, Gilbert Goffrey, good to have you return to the show. Yes. And, uh... <laughs> Al, can you get me a jacket? <laughs> And, of course, Gilbert will be appearing at uh, Nowhere. Nowhere. Just USA Up All Night. USA Up All Night. He's yeah. the host of that television program. And, by the way, when Gilbert was dying in the hospital, USA Up All Night, of course, uh, <laughs> them with just, about, just about anybody on the street. They got Lyle Wagner on. Right. Yeah. Was he actually on? No. Oh. They couldn't get him. Stuttering too much money. Stuttering John will be appearing with the nerds at Hooters in Springfield, Pennsylvania, this Friday night, March 6th. That's why he couldn't come in and visit me. <laughs> Jackie the Joke Man, 516-922-WINE. Gary, you got, any, you got a plug? Oh. Boy, Gary, did you get any TV ratings? Just checking on your balls, Paul. Oh, you did? Yeah, I got them in the Good, all right. Are they good? Yeah, very good. Are they? Yeah. What's he? I mean, I, I thought they were good. <laughs> Baba <laughs> our, our producer was like, he wasn't as happy about them as he should have been, which is why I actually had to call him for them. But they were pretty good. Really? Yeah. What do we have? Oh, well, i got to go look. All right, go ahead. Boy, Baba Gary, Bowie. this Saturday night at the Nassau Coliseum from 8 to 10 p.m. for the Long Island Custom Car Show. But well, we were all expecting huge ratings on this TV show. That's why probably, you know, what my usual eight or nine is not good enough for them well, anymore. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, man. People love Howie, Howiewood Squares. Let's see, uh, 11, 12, 16 share. No, oh, we got a 16 share. What's wrong with that? Well, how could he not be happy? 7165. Yeah, I guess it should have been bigger. It was 57597165. Well, we'd usually do a little better than that. Yeah. 
Well, that's weird. We had a 6-3 with a 13. I mean, you know, can't bitch about it. Mm -hmm. but, and, uh, and maybe it'll take a short year. Yeah, these ratings weren't so good. Maybe it'll do us a favor. Yeah, maybe off. we've uh, yeah. peaked. Yeah, I think we did peak. I think it's time to end the show. <laughs> oh, please, God, end yeah. that <laughs> show. <laughs> please, do me a favor. All right, Gilbert, thanks for stopping by. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you need to go to the hospital for a while. <laughs> and uh, we'll, uh, you want to play Stuttering John's song on the way up? Yeah. Oh, you know it's Bon Jovi's birthday today. John Bon Jovi? Yeah, yeah he's 31 good, years old. He's a good cat. He's a good dude. He's a good dude, man. He's a good dude. Yeah, he came back on the show. No, he's happening. He's really happening. All right, wait a second. You want to play Stuttering John's song? Yeah, why not? No, no, no. The program director doesn't like when we play Stuttering John's song. No. Yeah, but screw him. I'm a big guy. I can, <laughs> I can basically disobey orders. Well, you can take the You're a rebel. I'm a rebel. <laughs> I'm so I'm so rebellious that it would be bad for my image to listen to the program director. <laughs> Except I can't find John's song anywhere. What do I do with that? Screw John, I can't find it. Oh dear. Oh, here it is. Okay. John just I think this is pretty good. I don't think it's so bad. I guess if I didn't know it was John, I would think it was a lot better. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is John's band, Mun. I told him I'd play it all the way through. So pretend it's not John and just give it your endorsement. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Oh, that's, that's good. good. You like that, Gilbert? Yeah, that's real good. Gilbert could care less. Yeah. yeah. No, it's got a nice beat and it's easier to dance to. There you go. All right. We'll see you um, tomorrow. 92.3 K-Rock.